Good morning. How's everyone today? Good. Uh, welcome to Union Street. Um, people here and people online, thank you for joining us. Um, we are missing, we are missing our, our middle person today. She's feeling under the weather, but Diana and I will try our best. <laughs> um, so let's um, stand and we'll get started. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow.
one. Um, it's a complete new one. Um, we just learned it. So um, I think we're going to have some fun with it. And it's a Christmas song, and it's so pretty. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Good morning, and good morning to those who are joining us online. Online, good morning to you. Uh, we're excited to be able to be here, and what a fun new song. I love that. The Light of Christmas. Next Sunday, we are doing exactly that. In the afternoon, we are having, um, we're calling it Christmas cheer. We're just coming, singing some carols, having some cider and cookies, and uh, it's it's just fun. We often don't sing those Christmas carols. We sing them probably for maybe four weeks. 
Some of you know, love them. I know some of you don't. I'm looking at one in the back. And, uh, but for those who do, because it's just fun to do, we're having this gathering as something that you can, it's an easy invite to your neighbors or friends to come. We're just calling it Christmas cheer. So there's, there's nothing, um, they can just come and we're going to have fun, sing a few carols and have some cookies. Uh, speaking of cookies, um, the last couple years, um, some bakers and some shoppers have brought some cookies in. And we, last year, I believe we did 30 baskets of cookies that we just, we put them all together and we were able to deliver them to some shut-ins, to some widows. Um, we delivered them next door to the fire station and we want to do that again. So if you like to bake, or maybe you know just a really good cookie that you can pick up at the grocery store. Uh, we're doing that any time the week of December 13th uh, and 14th. That's, we're going to be delivering them the 14th. So if you would love to be involved in that, that would be great. The rest of the things are in your bulletin. As I say, we have different events going on. And we just really, it would be really great for you to share it, to invite somebody to, to come. Uh, Christmas is a great time. People are more open. Sometimes it's that one time a year that they will come uh, to church and to be able to hear the reason the light of the world has come. So we just encourage you to invite. Uh, right now we're going to dismiss our kids to their children's event. And I know they've been working on a few songs. They're going to be doing a little performance of singing on December 18th that we're excited uh, to hear them. Well, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that we can come and gather in your name to sing your praise, to remind us, God, that you indeed are the light of the world. Because at times, at God, this world seems so heavy, heavy with sickness, heavy, God, with hatred and anger that we see on the news, injustice and racism, poverty, and God, it can get overwhelming at times. And then we remember that you are the light of the world, that you're hope. So God, help us to shine your light to others, to bring hope to other people. And we thank you, God, that you, nothing is impossible for you. So we thank you, God. I thank you for each person that is here today and those who are serving. We thank you for the offering that has been brought in. That is, God, to further your kingdom, to further your ministry and mission that you have on Union Street. Thank you, God, what you're doing in our midst and what you continue to do. We just thank you and give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning, everyone. We are your impromptu Advent readers for today. <laughs> uh, and today, we're going to be lighting the candle of joy. So I'll pass the mic over to Ms. Nursa. <laughs> Matthew 2, 10 to 11. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bo bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him gifts of gold, frankincense, and mirth. As we gather today, we claim the gift of joy that is in Christ Jesus. We are aware of the sadness and grief that is around us. We hear about it globally, as many face poverty, a sense of insecurity, or feel they have been forgotten. We know about it locally, as many struggle with the consumer pressures of the season, or are tired with all the busyness. And we experience it personally, as we grieve all kinds of losses and sense our own loneliness. Into this darkness, the light has come. Into this despair came the gift of joy, Jesus Christ. In the face of sorrow and sadness, we light a candle of joy. May the light from this candle say to all that God's joy is coming on earth, as it already is in heaven. Rejoice in the Lord always, I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all, the Lord is near. Friends, let's rejoice that Jesus is near, God's joy has come. Let us reflect the gift of joy this Advent season. joy again. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart
and heaven and nature sing. Let heaven and heaven and nature sing. The first Noel, the angels did sing, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep. No Thank you. This Advent season, we are focusing on John chapter 1, the light has come. Last week, we looked at the first five verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. In the beginning, God spoke. There was light. And then light came again as a new beginning, a new creation through Jesus. The light has come to give us Life. It is a source of our life and love. It has power over despair and darkness. The light provides hope. We reflected on two questions that will be asked throughout the, ser the series. Have you received the light? And do you shine his light? Jesus left the splendor of heaven so you would know and experience the light. The light has come 
to give us life and love. Today we're examining verses 6 to 13. If you have your Bibles with you, there's some in the pews and the chairs. I invite you to join us. Verse 6, reading John chapter 1. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world, even though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, to who all did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born of natural descent, not of human decisions, but born of God. The witness was John the Baptist, who pointed the way to Jesus. He preached a message of repentance and forgiveness of sins. He was getting people's hearts and minds ready for the long-awaited Messiah. The prophet Isaiah wrote hundreds of years before, I will send my messenger ahead of you. Who will prepare your way? A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Zechariah, John's father, who waited years and believed that in fact that him and his wife Elizabeth would never have a child. But in their old age, an angel came and told Zechariah that he indeed would have a son, a son who would prepare the way for Jesus. Zechariah, John's father, praised God that his son would be a witness to the light. Can you imagine how proud Zechariah would be holding his precious baby boy in his elderly hands, not even thinking at once that he would ever be able to do this? And not only holding a baby, but knowing that baby was part of God's incredible plan to bring hope and healing to everyone. Listen to his words. These are Zechariah's words in Luke chapter 1, verses 76 to 79. And he said, And you, my little son, will be called the prophet of the Most High, because you will prepare the way for the Lord. You will tell his people how to find salvation through forgiveness of their sins. Because of God's tender mercies, the morning light is about to break upon us, to give light to those who sit in darkness, in the shadow of death, and to guide us to the path of peace. Zechariah knew his son had an important role in pointing others toward the light. He referred to Jesus as a morning light from heaven, a light to give hope and peace. John's life was all about being a witness to Jesus. He preached repentance of sins. John had a great following of people. And his message was this, after me, comes the one more powerful than I am, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you by the power of the Holy Spirit. John is a witness. What is a witness? 
A witness is something presented in support of the truth or an accuracy of a claim. Our daughter is buying her first home. She's 26. And as you may be aware, there's lots of details and paperwork involved in buying a house. It can be very stressful and at times overwhelming. We've had a lot of late night calls. One of the things that stood out for Sam is that she needed a witness for everything. She needed a house inspection done to witness, to assess the value of the house, the witness to verify that this indeed was a good investment, something she needed for the bank. She also needed an electrician to witness that the wiring was up to code and everything looked good for insurance purposes. She needed to show her bank her own personal bank statements to witness that she could afford to buy this house. And all these witnesses testify the house was a good investment and that Sam was able to get a mortgage. A witness. John's life was a witness to Jesus. And though he was the first to bear, bear witness to Jesus, John was not to be the last. As followers of Jesus, we all have this responsibility to witness about him, to declare the truth of Jesus so that all might believe in him. That's the foundation of evangelism and missions. That was the last thing that Jesus said before he ascended into heaven was go and tell people. And the question this morning that we're asking and pondering is, is our lives a witness to Jesus? Is your life a witness to Jesus? Would your family members, co-workers, neighbors, would they believe that, would they know that you believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world? Would they know that you follow his teachings? Are you a witness Someone that can support that Jesus is the Son of God, the Savior of the world. Do your words and actions demonstrate that? Are you generous or stingy? Are you kind or inconsiderate? Are you judgmental or are you compassionate? Compassionate to get to know someone's story before you make an assessment. We all know from the life of Jesus that he was compassionate, merciful, attentive, and full of grace and truth. Is our lives a witness to that? If you are brave, if you really want to know, you ask somebody who is close to you. You ask somebody what they think. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. A witness doesn't have to be perfect. We are human, so we are not perfect. But we can, by the power of the Holy Spirit, seek to live a life of intentionality that points others to Jesus. John wasn't perfect. In fact, when he was thrown in prison for speaking the truth, he started to have a few doubts. That is normal. As he sat in prison, falsely accused, knowing he was facing death, he wondered why Jesus didn't come and rescue him. And as those days and weeks and months went by, he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the Messiah we've been expecting or should we keep looking for someone else? John, who pointed the way for Jesus, asked questions. That right then and there, things in her life was not going according to plan. 
He wasn't receiving fair treatment. He was being treated unjustly. Too many people have this misconception that you have to be perfect to be a follower of Jesus, that you have to get your life all in order first. But it's not about perfection. It is about the presence. It's about keeping company with Jesus that transforms you into his image. Remember Moses. His face became radiant in the presence of God. Whenever he came from meeting with God, his face shone because he had been in the presence of God. And people were intimidated and fearful when they saw Moses' face. They didn't quite understand. So Moses put a veil upon his face. Sadly, many Christians can hide behind a veil. They think people may not understand or they may reject or ridicule you because of your faith. So fear dominates and light fades. We keep silent when we should speak up. We sit quietly when we should be standing. What would it be look look like if we allowed the light of Jesus to transform us? Not to give in to fear, to be okay that we may be considered a little weird. To be known as not the most popular. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with the leather belts around his waist. And he ate locusts and honey. John may not have been on the cover of the fashion magazine or had his recipe shared on Pinterest, but that didn't stop him from telling others about Jesus. That his life pointed to Jesus, he showed other people the way because he believed that Jesus was the light, the light that brings hope, the light that brings joy the light that brings peace, and the light that brings love. John was a witness right up until his death. How can you, how can God use you right where you are, in your own circle of influence, in your family, in your school, in your workplace, in your neighborhood, to be a light to point people to Jesus? Here's the good news. It is not your job to convince people or to convict of sin. That is the role of the Holy Spirit. Your role is just to be a witness, to be a light, to do your normal activity. Not even Jesus, the Son of God, could convince everyone that he was a long-awaited Messiah. See, people had preconceived ideas about what the Savior of the world should look like. In Jesus' day, they were looking for a Messiah who was a military leader like David, someone who could rescue them from the oppression of the Roman rule. They didn't see that God had a much bigger, better picture to save everyone, not just for a bit of time, but for all eternity. Sadly, many people continue to look to a counterfeit light. A counterfeit light that gives temporary hope, temporary joy, temporary peace, and temporary love. We think we can buy it. That is why we search for the perfect gift. On Black Friday, now these were statistics in the States, I couldn't find them for Canada, On Black Friday, sales were $9.12 billion. And on Cyber Monday, sales hit a record of $11.3 billion. 
That's a lot of shopping. We search, we search. Here is the great news, is that we don't have to buy it. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For it has been grace that you have been saved through faith. And it is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, so what no one can boast. John, who witnessed the transforming power of Jesus' life, says the light was for everyone. Everyone. And even though Jesus was in the world, the world did not recognize him. We read that earlier. I always feel bad for the innkeeper and the Christmas plays. He always comes off sounding like a little bit selfish and unkind. But the truth of it is that we are all innkeepers, deciding whether we have room or not for Jesus. Deciding whether we are going to allow him to come into our lives to transform our lives so that we can shine his light. Verse 11 said, He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Over 700 years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah prophesied that the Messiah was going to be misunderstood and rejected by those he came to save. Isaiah 53 verses 3 to 6, says he was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hid their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are all healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned her own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. That when Jesus left the splendor of heaven, that he came with purpose to reconcile that relationship that was broken way back in the beginning. That he came to bring light, to bring hope, to bring joy. That is why we light candles at Advent time to remind us those symbols of what this light came. In verse 12, it says, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent or of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. For those who decide to make room for Jesus, to believe that he indeed is a light of the world, to be a witness of his life and love, they become beloved sons and daughters of God. The family of God expands. And the great news that there is always room for more. And this invitation of the light is for everyone. The light has come to give us life and love. And the light is our witness. The light is our witness to God's goodness and grace. And the light is our witness to show others God's goodness and grace. That we have this incredible privilege of partnering with God becoming his beloved children, not because of anything we have done, but what Jesus has done. That Jesus 
overcame the darkness by his death and resurrection. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says, For God who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts so we would know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. How incredible is it that God wants to use you and me so that other people can see Jesus' face shining through you. Again, it's not all about trying to be perfect. It's all about the presence, keeping company with Jesus. That Jesus came so that we wouldn't have to do life alone. Jesus came to give us hope, to give us joy, to give us peace. Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. I pray this Christmas season that we will get closer to Jesus, that we will be more aware of his presence. And as we become closer to Jesus, that our life reflects his light and that by doing that we are able to show God's goodness and grace to others that through our own words and actions our light would be a witness God is still looking for people who will be a witness to his light that he wants to partner with you and me so that we can transform this dark, hurting world into a place of hope and healing. When Jesus left the splendor of heaven, he was bringing heaven here. That too often we, we kind of put all our hope in eternity. And that's not a bad thing. But to remember that Jesus is here with us, bringing heaven to earth as often we sing. And that through you, you can be that witness of that hope and healing. And the question to ask yourself, have I allowed Jesus room in my life to do that? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we bow our heads in awe of your goodness and your grace. How you relentlessly pursue us in a relationship with you. That you want to partner with us. That you know everything about us, God. That you use the ordinary to do the extraordinary. To show your life, your light through the broken pieces of our own lives to bring people who are far from you closer to you. So God, this season, may we be intentionally intentional in creating space for you and getting closer to your presence so that our own lives would be transformed by your light and in doing so that we could transmit your light to others we know we live in a hurting broken world and people are desperate and they're searching so god help us give us the courage and boldness to be your witness that we thank you in the powerful name of jesus amen you guys can please stand and we're going to end with king of kings if we could ask one thing, is to really pay attention to the lyrics of this song. It's quite powerful. And um, let it sink in. If
fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt praise the father praise the son praise the spirit three in one god of glory majesty praise forever to the king of kings to reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for your sake you died praise the Father praise the Son praise the stone was built for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who come to the father are restored and the church of christ was born then the spirit lit the flame and this gospel truth of grace of Jesus and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Have a great week.